So welcome everybody. Um, today I'm going to talk about Copilot agents creating with the Teams toolkit. Um, first, a little bit about uh, myself. Uh, hello, I'm Nico de Clare. You speak it in a French way. Um, I'm from Belgium, more specifically from Zottegem, and I work as a Microsoft 365 architect or developer at Connection. It's a Belgian company. I'm also a Microsoft MVP um, in Microsoft 365 development and Microsoft Graph. So, next. Okay, that didn't work well. Next. Um, so uh, when you talk about Copilot agents, uh, you all may have heard of it already, um, but you have uh, this really cool thing that you can use it in context. You so you can just actually tag it, um, or you can use it in an immersive view. And when we're talking about Copilot agents, there are two uh, possible um, possible ways to to use that. Uh, so first of all, you have to do the declarative agent. It's more like extends extending the already existing Microsoft Copilots. Um, but you can also build your own agent where you have more more um, uh, more room to do your thing, uh, more flexible. Um, and that's called a custom engine agent. And there are two ways to create those agents. You can do it with like we we said we like to say low code, no code. So you can use it with uh, Copilot Studio, or you can use it uh, with Visual Studio Code, where you have more, uh, yeah, where you have more room for your own code, for your own code implementations and stuff. So today I'm going to talk about how do you create it with the Visual Studio Code uh, version, and not about with the Copilot Studio version. For Teams tool Toolkit, when you want to use it, um, you need a couple of things. First of all, you need Node.js uh, version 16 or 18, 18 is needed. Um, you need a Microsoft 365 account with the license, of course. Um, and you need also a Copilot for Microsoft 365 license because when you want to test your uh, or use that agent, uh, you have to you, you have to need the license. Um, and of course, um, well, for declarative agents, you don't really need an other subscription. But when you want to create like a custom agent with your own large language model, you will need an Azure subscription because you will need to use Azure Open AI for that, or you can use it. The Teams Cool Tool is a very, very cool tool because you can use it in, in three three ways. Uh, the first way is you can use it with the CLI version. You can just uh, download it and then use it in your command line interface. And from there, you can create all sorts of Teams extensions. Um, you can also use it in Visual Studio. Um, Visual Studio is, is a paid with license, um, so you would need the license, but you can also use it from there and then create your Teams extensions um, in uh, uh, in creating in C Sharp and stuff. And uh, the most popular um, is the Teams toolkit in Visual Studio Code, where you can create your Teams extensions with um, with TypeScript or JavaScript or stuff like that. And I'm also going to focus on the Teams Toolkit in Visual Studio Code for today because I'm most familiar with that one. Um, and when we when we look to the Teams tool, Toolkit in Visual Studio Code, uh, you can just install it uh, by uh, clicking oh by clicking on extensions, um, and then from there you can install the Teams Toolkit. Enough talked about the slides. Let's jump right into a demo. I will give you two demos today. Uh, the first one is. Um, Wait a minute, I'm going to open a new screen. Uh, the first one is about the declarative agent. So as I told already, when you open Visual Studio, uh, maybe zoom a little bit. When you open Visual Studio, uh, you have here your extensions. And when you click on extensions, you can search for all type of extensions and you can just search for Teams Toolkit, click on it. And as you see, I already have it installed, but when you don't have it installed, you can just click here on install. And then you see here uh, on the left that the Teams Toolkit icon is shown. So when you click on that one, you can see that the Teams Toolkit UI interface is loading. So just a couple of seconds. Oh, there we go. Um, and then you can see the documentation and stuff like that. And we want to create a new app. So we click on new app and you see that you get an, a menu uh, from the top uh, of your screen. And you can just click here on uh, agents and you see here, create a declarative agent. So when I click on that one, it's going to ask me a little more uh, of questions. Uh, do you want to create an API plugin or just uh, your own agents uh, by declaring a certain 
for this demo, I'm just choosing the declarative agents uh, with my own instructions. I'm not going to use a plugin for now, so I'm just clicking you know, plugin and then the folder where you want to save your Teams, um, teams Copilot Declar um, sorry, your Copilot declarative agent. Just going for the default folder, and I'm going to give it a name, for example, um, demo uh, community call. Just like that, and you see a new screen is opened. He asked if I trust the authors. Of course, I trust them. And you're welcomed by a very cool welcome screen where you get a little uh, explanation about this declarative agent template is already uh, built for you, or uh, you can just use it like that. And when we are looking at the files that are already there, uh, we can see here in the app package folder uh, that you have a couple of files. For example, the first one is a declarative agent. Um, just a couple of things like the name, the version is written here, and you can add some more things here. Like for examples, you can add your own actions that are actually API plugins that you can add uh, to this uh, JSON uh, file. And then your Copilot declarative agent will use those um, API plugins. You can also add conversation starters, for example, that are just like the word that uh, starters with conversations. Um, and it's an array, so you can just add uh, multiple conversation starters here. And the first one that you have to to type is uh, uh, is um, is your name, your type, and your contents, for example. Um, and then you can uh, use these conversation starters. Next to that, you can also add capabilities. So you have a couple of them here, like for example, uh, you have, oh, sorry, um, you can add capabilities here, for example, um, and back name. And then you have to give the name for your capability. And you see here, already preloaded here, uh, you can uh, have all sorts of um, capabilities, for example, a code interpreter. If you want to use uh, code that your declarative agents have to interpret, you can use a graph connector. You can also use graphic art for image generation. You can use OneDrive and SharePoint for now, just only uh, for documents, not with this, because it may be another story. And you can opt to uh, webs to use web search in your declarative agent. For example, if I select that one, then your declarative agent will have access to the internet and not just look into the context of your agent of your Microsoft 365 environment. And um, that's it, I guess, uh, actions, conversation started, right? Um, next to that, uh, also a very important thing is the instructions, because in here you give the instructions to your uh, declarative agents. That's just like when you're in creating Copilot Studio, an agent, you have to give a description to your to your agents, uh, which will be used uh, for how your agents will behave. That's the same here in the in the declarative agent way to the Teams toolkits. In here, you describe what your agent has to do and how it has to uh, react. For example, I'm have already prepared a prompt. Uh, I'm not going to type it uh, for today because we don't have that much time. But um, I just have written a prompt which, which will help me with creating an SPFX uh, solution, um, for example. Um, and just like that, I'm, I can save it. And um, if I don't have an error here, um, my declarative agent is ready to be used. Next, when I want to use it, I just can click here on the Teams Toolkit again. And you see here in your lifecycle, you have three options. You have provision, deploy, and publish. The first one is you can just provision it to Teams, to the business chat uh, application in Teams, uh, where you can test it, um, for example. And once you have tested it very well, you can opt to deploy it and publish it, so it will be available for the rest of the company in the tenant. Um, because when provisioning it, it's uh it is a couple of minutes uh, that it can take before it's it's feasible so i already have prepared um the um the declarative agents so when we're going to the beach chat, uh, we can see here in the right all sorts of agents that are available or they are already used and for example i have in my declarative agent for the community call 
And when I click it, it opens the declarative agent. Another possible way is when you click on Copilot itself, you can just use Add and then tag your declarative agents. And then you see that your declarative uh, agent is loaded into your profile screen. I'm just going to use uh, this one here, declarative agents, and then I can ask, what can you do? And it will respond to me uh, based on the instructions, what it will, uh, op what it can do for me. And like you see here, um, it's the SPFX series uh, declarative agents, and it can help me with setting up my projects, uh, testing, and all sorts of that. So I can ask, how can I create a SPFX project? And, and then it will uh, look for information on the internet, and then it will uh, respond to me, uh, like, how can you create your own um, SPFX project? The thing for declarative agents. Um, next to that, you also have your custom agent where you have more freedom. Um, and for that, we are going back to our Visual Studio Code environment, and we're going back to the Teams Toolkit. And you see here, create a new app so I can create from my declarative agent Visual Studio Code window. Um, and then from there, I can create a new custom agent. And for a custom agent, um, I don't click on, on agents. I'm going to click on custom engine agents. So if I click here, um, I can click on basic AI chatbox, not going to choose the option with my to chat with my data or the AI agent, just basic AI chatbox. Um, and then I choose for that, which you can also opt for Python, um, but that's not my strength. Um, and then you have the possibility to choose your own open AI. So you can choose your own uh, large language model developed by open AI, or you can uh, choose uh, your Azure open AI um, that you're using in, in Azure. And just like I said in, in the in the opening in, in my slides, um, for this, you will need an, an Azure sub subscription. So I'm going to choose for Azure open AI. And it's going to ask me a couple of questions about my um, Azure uh, Open AI environment. And for that, I'm going to um, my Azure environment. So when I'm in my Azure environment, I can just uh, choose my uh, Azure Open AI in here. And like you see, I already have an Open AI environment here. And when I click on it, uh, you have here the keys and endpoints, and that's something that you will need for um, creating your uh, custom agent in the Teams Toolkit. Not going to show them, just going to copy them. Um, and um, as you see, he asks for the service key, so I'm just going to paste it in here. Um, then he's asking for the service endpoint of my um, Azure Open AI. That's what the one right here. Uh, going to copy that one paste it in here. And then it's asking me about my deployment. And for, for your deployment, you have to go to the newly Azure AI Foundry portal. So I'm going to click on that one. And um, in um, in my Azure OpenAI uh, Foundry, you can see your deployments. I already have created one, but you can create all sorts of deployments here. You can choose for uh, a GPT-4.0 or GPT-3.5, uh, for example. And as you see here, I already have created my 3.5. So I'm going to copy the model name and I'm going to paste it in here. I click on enter and then of course, uh, my default browser, my application name, uh, custom agency, C, uh, C, like that. And I'm just giving it the name and it will create uh, the template for me. Yes, I trust the others. Um, and as you can see here, also here, the template is generated for me. I also get a nice uh, welcoming page and you see here, I have uh, pretty much uh, more files than my declarative agents. Uh, as you can see here, I just have these files, but in my custom agent, I have a lot of more like the prompt folder, the app folder and stuff like that. Um, the first one that's important here is the config file. Um, in the config file, you have all sorts of parameters, uh, like for instance, this is the completion um, Azure AI uh, type. And you have, you have all sorts of parameters. There's also the parameters you can configure in your deployment in Azure Open AI Foundry. 
um, but you can also um, yeah um, change them in your config file in here. And the two most important for me are the temperature. So how creative do you want your um, your um, custom agent to be? And the top picks top underscore p that is um, like if you give it a number, for example, like one point zero, it it will choose uh, in an um, for more words. Than, uh, than when you choose to um, opt for zero here. And just like in my declarative agent, I have also my instructions. So in here, I have my SK prompt, and that's just like my instructions in my declarative agent. Also here, I've, I've prepared my prompts, um, and I'm just going to choose for documentation assessment, who is very curious about how I want to document uh, something that I will ask him. And if your adapter, um, in your adapter, you have just your uh, uh, error handling, for example, for your adapter. Uh, you also have your config, not very um, important right now. Uh, you have your index, and you also have your app. And your app is, is actually um, very interesting because in here you can just say, like for example, app dot uh, on message. Oh, I bet on. It's not going to be it. Um, message async. And in here, um, it's not on message, it's message. I've been to message. Uh, and in here, I can define, uh, for example, if there is something uh, like uh, a sort of text like tickle me. Uh, then it have to respond like await context dot send context send activity I'm tickling you. So what you're defining here is that actually when someone says in your bot tickle me not good, it will not go directly to your large language model, but it will respond to it just that sentence or that action that you're um, telling you. Another great stuff is also the app authentication in here. Authentication. Um, and in you, you can, for example, if you're using graph, you can uh, use that authentication towards the graph um, and use then graph in your um, in your custom agents. There is a great sample about it from the um, from the Copilot Dev Bootcamp where you can see that uh, how they use the graph authentication. So to round up, I'm going to show my um, my uh, custom agents, and I have already um, I have already my custom agent here. And for example, I have these two messages: tickle me and stop tickling me. For example, um, from here I can just click on provision, and the cool thing here is um, that I can go to run and debug. And I can debug it right into my test tool. So once it's provisions, I can just click on play. Um, maybe maybe uh, it's also interesting in your outputs. You have your team's toolkit. You also see everything that is that it does for you, like how it provisions your uh, your copilot uh, agents into into the cloud into Azure. So now. I'm, Pressing on play and then my browser will open. Just a couple of seconds. App crashed. Okay. <laughs> and and just a giant time check for you, Nico. We'll we yeah, get the other two demos to you. Yeah. Um anyway, when I'm clicking on debug here, my uh, test tool will open and uh, from there you can start to test your bot like asking questions. And if you ask a question like, for example, tickle me, it will respond with uh, tickling mode um, activated, just like here. Unfortunately, the app crashed, but I'm going to round up uh, here so I can give time for the other presenters. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.